And to find out more about the current situation in Ukraine following President Joko Widodo's recent visit, we now have with us in the studio Ukraine, Ukraine Ambassador to Indonesia, His Excellency Vasil Hamyanin. Hi there. Selamat uh, in, sore. Selamat sore. In light of uh, the recent uh, uh, numbers and the COVID situation currently in the country, we're going to remove our masks, especially since Thank we you have so much. you in the studio. Oh, I appreciate with it. You. So um, <laughs> let's get right into it. So what is the latest uh, in Ukraine since the uh, President Joko Widodo made his visit, which you were a part of as well? Well, uh, I mean, uh, if you mean the influence of a visit to Ukrainian society or something, mm -hmm. then nothing substantial happened. Mm -hmm. uh, the situation is still tense, it's still like fighting, like, like confronting the enemy, mm -hmm. trying to liberate the occupied regions. And still, uh, every region of Ukraine is under strike, mm -hmm. is under danger of uh, missile strikes and bombardments. So still like this, war is war, alagur kum alagur, you know. Yeah. Mm. So um, when we talk about the uh, the purpose of the visit of the president uh, of the Indonesian president Joko Widodo to Ukraine, what was um, we, I mean we know that his particular agenda was to focus you know on food security first and being able to you know uh, make sure that the grains that are in in Ukraine will be able to be transported out and that's why he decided to visit Ukraine and Russia afterwards. But what was you know setting up the visit for the president to come to? Ukraine, uh, the process of life. Perhaps you can share with us, um, you know, a couple of stories, you know, there must be a lot of processes, you know, in terms of security and everything. Was it a smooth process and what was the response like when President Joko Widodo or his, uh, you know, his parties, uh, you know, approached you and saying, look, our president is interested to me in visit and how long did it take to set it up? Well, the <laughs> it's, it's a very simple question. I would answer in one, one word. It was a success. Mm -hmm. A big success that uh, was uh, absolutely um, uh, like uh, given very high valuation by Ukrainian side, by Indonesian side too. So it was smooth, it was safe, uh, and uh, even my friend. Well, well the story uh, here is that one of my friends uh, called me and said, "No, like what happens? Uh, no bombardment, no, no, no warnings of air defense warnings. Mm -hmm. What happened today?" I said because it's a visit, very important visit. So, oh my God, I forgot. So. <laughs> It was oh. the, maybe the only one safe day for Ukraine during the last five months. Okay. Mm. Not a single missile struck the, the Ukrainian cities and, and uh, lands, right? A part of the, you know, the, the, the battlefield over there in the east. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the next day when Pak Jokowi left to Moscow, and we, he started peace talks with uh, dictator Putin, yeah. same day it was like 40 missile strikes on Odessa and other cities. So that was, I mean, that was an uh, uh, obvious show of disrespect to, to Mr. Jokowi and to Indonesian, to Indonesian efforts by, by Russian uh, president. So that, there was a conscious effort then for them to stop everything on that? hundred percent sure. Okay. Mm. He just demonstrated the force and say, whatever you talk, I just don't care because I, I don't care about what you say. That was very pretty clear when you, when you listened to the press conference after that. Right. Like Jokowi was talking about the peace, about mm -hmm. the grains, about the uh, food security stuff. And Putin was talking about some bilateral things, like you know, like projects somewhere in the future. So that was clear that uh, the attitude towards the Pak Jokowi's visit in Ukraine and in Russia was absolutely different. Okay. Mm. Absolutely different. Would you say it was um, overall? I mean, you did say the trip was a success. Yes. Um, how productive was it on each of the ends? I mean, obviously you didn't <coughs> feel it was that productive on the Russian end, but at least on the Ukrainian side of things. Well, uh, I'll start from Russian side. I think that from Russian side, to some extent, it was productive. In what meaning? That uh, president of Indonesia, uh, foreign minister, and all the delegations could have a chance to look at the eyes of this man, to look at the, uh, all the situation, to hear what they say and understand that this is hopeless mm -hmm. and that Russia is not capable of uh, peace talks. Russia is, does not want to uh, have peace or negotiations or something. Mm -hmm. Russia does not, does, does not want to release the grains from Ukrainian silos to the world markets. This is a very important gain, I think, from this visit. That's, my uh, that's how I, I understand this, uh, looking at the results, right? Nothing happens till now. So far. So as for Ukraine, I think that was a success for well, many, many, many um, uh, dimensions of that. And, uh, and for example, that was the first visit of the Indonesian president, the first visit uh, of Asian leader to Ukraine since the beginning of the war. Mm -hmm. And it was the first visit of the world leaders whatsoever to Kiev and then to Moscow. That was like bridge visit, right? right. Mm -hmm. well, the first, 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 right? right. 
the result was good because I think that, uh, you know, if you want to move very heavy objects, that's yeah. physics, right? Yeah. You have to pay a lot of force to this, apply a lot of force to this, a lot of strength. But then you moved, it's, it's okay, just going smoother, right? Yeah. So here is the same story. Uh, this is the first step. We moved this forward, first step, now it will be crucial. What will Pak Jokowi do the next? Right. The first what? step is the hardest. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but the second, the third, now we are watching. We are waiting. We are yeah, putting a lot of hope to that. Okay. So we look what what uh, Indonesian government would do next right. to you know to to um, bring the uh, end to this war. So um, you know, if you if you've mentioned that it was a success, so my curiosity is um, if you could share with us some of the stories that was shared during the table because. In terms of food security, you have a lot of grains that needs to be exported out, right? You have a lot of grains that needs to be exported out because, um, uh, and, and it's, it can't be because the biggest ports are still covered. Um, has there been any mention of, uh, has there been any changes in terms of, you know, the, uh, you know, the food products that are in the Ukraine to be any negotiation talks about that to be able to come out of the country? Or is there any way, apart from the seaports, to actually export out the grains? Uh, honestly, uh, I, I've mentioned this many, many times, and not on, only my, myself. Mm. But there, there is no other ways, uh, to be honest. There are ways, but it's like 1% uh, one, one out of the full, full amount of grains. Uh, if you say by railway or by, by road, it's like uh, just, right. you know, syndicate. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the main, the main uh, bulk of uh, grains, like millions of tons of grains, uh, can be delivered only by, by ports. Because otherwise it will take time, like months to load, months to deliver, and it will be expensive. It will be like, you know. But the main problem here is not even the uh, present situation that we cannot unblock the uh, like deliveries mm -hmm. uh, and cannot deliver the grains in silos. The main, even bigger problem is now we are, it's time to gather the crops. Yeah. And uh, we are, well, we, we estimate about like 50 million tons of crops to mm -hmm. be gathered. And there is no storages for that. Mm. And if this doesn't happen, I mean, if we delay our deliveries yeah. of crops in silos, it may, okay, take one month, two months, okay, then we'll unblock the ports and deliver. It's yeah. fine. Right. But if we fail to uh, ensure the storage for the 50 million tons of grains, we we'll just lose it. Does it all go to we waste? We just lose it. it. It will go, it will be rotten on the, on the fields. Okay. And uh, nobody can, can, can think anything, any good, um, uh, any good way out of this. What's the threshold then? What are we looking at time-wise before like, that, ha that can possibly happen? Oh, it, I'm talking about months. One, two, three. Oh, well, right. it's, it's, it's crucial because once you gather it, I yeah. mean, it's, it's still like, like wet, mm -hmm. not, not so dry. It should yes. be stored properly. Otherwise, it will like, like you know, it right. gets... Uh, uh, what the, the the fungus and all that sure. stuff yeah. so it will be damaged okay. damaged totally and entirely and uh, you cannot reverse it right after all mm. so, so. would it be safe to say then it would be because we do know that these visits from president joko widodo were just to set the table as an appetizer yes. to what would be the main course which is the upcoming g20 summit but would that be too late i mean this yes. have to be done now in between and what do you think needs to be done in between I've mentioned this since the beginning of the war. It will be too late whatsoever. If we put all the hopes to the G20 summit, mm -hmm. I would not go for that way. I would not go this, this path because it will be far too late to decide anything. I hope that the war will be ended much, much sooner than this. November, oh my God. I hope, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the beginning of September now. Right. Uh, the end of the war, right? Uh, that's my... Well, I hope it it's the hope. ended yesterday, but sure. yeah, G20 summit is long story yes. still now. Still and happen. what can we decide on G20 summit? What is the plan? Mm -hmm. I mean, I repeatedly say, what is the plan? The plan should be very concrete. The plan will, uh, should include very concrete instruments, mm -hmm. right? To how to operate it. Mm -hmm. If we just talk, it doesn't help, especially okay. with the viral dictator like Putin, yeah. you know? Mm. So apart from, you know, obviously the first and easiest thing would be when Russia just miraculously decide to stop the war. But according to you, though, what can Ukraine also do to ensure or perhaps to force, you know, a side of Russia to meet in the middle of your demands as well? To force Russia? Sorry, what? To meet in the middle. To force Russia to move to make a decision. To uh, <clears throat> we have only one way to do this. Mm -hmm. To defeat the Russian army. Mm -hmm. Just to kill the invaders. 
and kick them off of my land, to liberate the, the Ukrainian land. That's what we can do because we are under attack. Mm -hmm. And we just, what we can, we conf confront the enemy, we can uh, resist, we can uh, fight. That's what we can do. Uh, uh, Putin, Putin is not negotiable. Mm. It's just as simple as this. What works? Weapons, sanctions, that's it. Now, obviously, um, this comes on the tail end of, uh, again, the president's visit. What do you think Indonesia's next step should be? Because you did say yes. that Indonesia could take next steps in order to help end this war. What do you think those steps are? Well, um, I'm not as wise and experienced as Indonesian government and uh, definitely not like Ibu Retno Pak Jokowi. No, definitely not. So I'm not going to lecture them and, uh, you know, give any advice on that. Uh, but what I really think, they should, I repeat it, should be a plan. Okay. The plan with very concrete steps, measures to be taken, mm -hmm. you know, step by step, one, two, three, four, five. So if you have, like playing chess, right? right. If you have a plan for two steps and, the, and your opponent has 10 steps, you lose. Correct. No chance, right? Okay. So if you want to win over very strong, like, and very, um, very mean opponent, mm -hmm. you have to plan a longer plan than him. Okay. Yes. Right. That's it. So work out a plan. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my idea. Um, so, the, so far the war has lasted over four months now. I mean, it has been that long. It's hard for us to imagine what's uh, happening right now. Um, can you explain a little bit about the uh, state of the uh, civilian evacuations? Is that still taking place? Uh, because we have known in some cities that uh, people are actually starting yes. to come back into the city and uh, they're trying to return life to, uh, back as normal. Can you explain a bit about the situation going on there right now? You know what? Now the front line is nearly not moving. So. They are trying to attack uh, these or that, uh, this or that uh, village or small right. towns. Uh, but yes, our government encourages uh, the citizens to move out of the, uh, of the cities and villages near the front line okay. mm. uh, to ensure safety. At least, at least you should evacuate children, elders, like women, okay. and that those who cannot, who cannot fight. Right. Uh, right? So uh, this happens all the time. However, there are still people and families who don't want to move or doesn't feel unsafe or something. So we cannot do anything with that. We don't do it forcefully, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, as practice showed, the uh, recently occupied by Russian Federation, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, right? Mm -hmm. These two, two, two cities were nearly empty when, uh, when it came to the occupation. Right. And nearly destroyed as Mariupol to the ground. Um, in your opinion, uh, there have been several uh, points of Ukraine where they have held the ground. The front lines have held their ground. In fact, have uh, forced Russian forces to retreat in your opinion, is this winnable without the help of uh, with uh, other nations? I mean, as it stands, you, you said that their only <laughs> option is to fight. Um, is this yeah. winnable in that way, in that one option that you do have? It will only it will only be uh, be a big difference in time. Of course, it's like uh, I mean, the the army, however strong it is, uh, cannot fight uh, right. against the nation. So, mm -hmm. if we are not given any support from the world, this will be just a matter of time. But, uh, of course, to uh, put this uh, uh, war to, the, to an end as soon as possible, we do require the support from the world community, and we do receive this support. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> we would like to, to receive more, of course. Uh, if we get you know, the weapons we demand, we, we require, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we request from the, from, the, from the partners, I think it will be a matter of weeks. Really? Yes. Oh. Well, it, it sure looks like the world is, is certainly keeping the support up to make sure that the Ukrainian people have what they need to be able to defend themselves. And you spoke of long plans, right? You are now, um, uh, Ukraine is now already, uh, has already received the approval of candidacy of EU and also have already, you know, started the application for NATO, if I'm not mistaken. And do you think that's part of the long plan to able to, uh, you know, amp up your security? And also, um, I think what you mean would be boosting economic recovery. And is that, do you think, going to help uh, win this war as well? Although individually, of course, you know, EU member states are also helping you and you have a lot of partners helping you. No, by, by mentioning the plan, mm -hmm. right, just concrete plan, it will not uh, include the NATO membership or EU membership because this is long run. Yeah. This is long, long, long song which we can, can last for years maybe, if not decades, right? So I'm talking about the immediate plan, immediate measures to be taken. Yeah. And it means uh, effectively the, uh, the unity uh, of many nations, uh, the ability of the world, human, of the humankind basically, of the, of the people goodwill 
to work out the plan together. How can we, uh, you know, resolve this uh, puzzle? Mm. How can we influence Putin to the extent that he would agree, including some, you know, undercover, under carpet agreements, whatever. I don't care what it, it is. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we only have few uh, very important points that we're not going to, uh, we're not going to uh, refuse. Yep. We're, not to, we're not going to give up, right. yep. meaning the uh, sovereignty of Ukraine, yes. meaning the lands of Ukraine, our territorial integrity, meaning the people of Ukraine, mm -hmm. who should be protected and those people forcefully uh, like uh, taken to, to Russia should be uh, should be should return to Ukraine. Who wants, of course, if, if if there is any? So there should very concrete steps, and the world community should be united. To it's not up to one country to bring peace. Of course. It's well, you if we are stronger when united, you see, yeah. so much stronger. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, this is the truth. And uh, if someone would lead the nations to unite and take decisions to replace in this function the Security Council of the United Nations, mm -hmm. which is paralyzed because of Russia. That will be the answer. This will be the way out. It might be the G20. But, it's but we too long. wait so, till yeah. the summit. Yeah. So if we might say, um, hopefully there are a couple of your comrades in Ukraine being able to access this interview as well, what would your personal message be to your fellow Ukrainians? Because I understand the last time you came, you also said that you are separated from some of your children. And I hope they're also still safe. Um, what would you love to say to your, um, to your you. fellow Ukrainians? A uh, message would be very clear. And, and uh, please take care of yourself. Stay strong and trust our army. Trust the army. Your Excellency, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us a little bit and uh, give us a little bit more insight on the situation over there. We do hope that the situation is able to get resolved sooner than later. In the meantime, we will take our first short break of the That's program, right. but we've got more for you, I believe, when we return. Stay tuned with us on the R News Show and see you today. <laughs>